Hello everybody, my name is Christian Aldo and welcome to The Plastic General. In today's episode, we are going to journey to the steppes of Russia and fight a guerrilla war alongside of Soviet partisans fighting the dreaded Don Cossacks. Then we're going to check out some super heavy German artillery. Sound exciting? Let's go to war! Fire! So let's travel deep into Russia, circa 1940, 1941, and I present to you the German super heavy self-propelled mortar, and this one is named Thor. This prefabricated model was uh, was made by by Dragon Models, and it came out around uh, let's say 2003. And um, this is how it came in, really nice box. No figures came along with it. It's beautifully compatible with 132 scale. And to give you an idea of the scale, is there's a, there is a figure from Forces of Valor. And uh, let me tell you about the, uh, the Thor Morser. It was very, very heavy. Um, it would travel about, probably about five, five kilometers an hour. So it would take a very long time to get where it was going. But when it got there, it would it would go to the outskirt of a of a defended city, and it would use its fifty four centimeter shell, and they would load it into the back. They it would be on this little sled, and they would push it inside, and and then the the mortar would go up really high, and the shell would fire out of here at a really high trajectory, and then land into inside of the wall of the city. This thing was extreme, it was devastating. And it attacked one of the famous um, port cities called Sevastopol in, uh, in Russia. Okay, let's, uh, let's continue around. I'm going to put the figures around the, the vehicle. So these, um, these wheels here, I think, would be designed to elevate the gun. So this guy would be elevating the, operating the gun. And then we would have uh, a few people here... Uh, these guys would be operating the sled for for loading, for loading the, uh, the the shell, loading the shell. And then you'd have a couple guys down here arguing and looking about uh, talking about t about uh, targeting. Now, believe me, I, I don't think anybody anybody with their right mind would be standing here. <laughs> they, nobody would stand. <laughs> nobody would be standing here when that thing went off. It would. It would probably. It might kill you. The shock wave from the from the that gun firing might kill you. So I imagine, if if that thing was going off, people would be standing very far away, much further away than that. And these guys here, uh, they probably uh, they probably hired deaf people to do that job. Another really cool feature about this gun is it actually has a recoil. So when it fire, ooh. When it fires, it actually moves back like this with a um, the spring action. But but don't don't dare stick your thing in here. You'll never get it out. It'll fall back inside and you'll lose it. There you are, the Thor super heavy self-propelled mortar, uh, and it's by Dragon Models. It's prefabricated, so if you can still find one, they're very rare now and very, very pricey, but they're still out there. So uh, get lucky, score one. So as, you know, this, this giant mortar and all of these German operations are slowly moving along uh, the countryside of Russia, they're in constant danger of Soviet partisans. So that brings us to the next set which was released by one of my favorite current toy soldier producers, Engineer Basovich, and here they have the Soviet partisans. The first two poses um, are, they seem to be partisan commanders. Uh, this guy is some commander that I don't know who he is, and this guy is probably his uh, right-hand man. And I've painted them to the level that I'm happy with. But I love Engineer Basovich. Usually they come out with about 12 poses per set. Poses three and four. A couple of partisans um, 
kneeling, sharpshooting. Uh, you can see that they're wearing semi-military issue clothing. So the military was probably giving them as what, whatever leftover clothes that they had, or if they escaped uh, from the Germans and were half wearing civilian clothes, half wearing military official military clothes. A lot of uh, a lot of civilian weaponry or captured weapons. Hold it. Let's name that fucking goddamn. PPSH 1941. PPSH 1941. PPSH 1941. I and he's uh, firing a PPSH 1941. And uh, this figure is definitely wearing civilian clothing. And he's firing probably a, a found rifle. So they all fought side by side uh, behind enemy lines. And these guys would be waiting behind like a like an old some old an old fence or something, waiting for the Germans to come by. Poses five, six, and seven. Get up there. Um, this figure here is firing a TT-1933 pistol, uh, wearing uh, some military issue clothing, and the rest is probably civilian. Um, here we definitely have two civilian figures. Uh, this guy's walking with a bayoneted rifle, and this guy's probably sneaking up on a German sentry, ready to stab him in the neck. Very cool civilian figures. Angry villagers looking for trouble. Poses eight and nine. Two figures throwing grenades. And here's the, the PPSH submachine gun in his other in his left hand. And this figure has a submachine gun strapped to his back, wearing, it seems, uh, more military issue clothing. Poses 10 and 11 are two more partisans. And one of them seems like this older gentleman here seems like he'd be like the grandfather to this child partisan whose parents were probably killed and he became orphaned. So he decided to join the resistance and he has a captured uh, German MP40, which is a nice, uh, unique touch, a child partisan. Now, Here they are, all 11 poses of Soviet partisans by Engineer Basevich. Um, fair warning, um, Mr. Basevich, he comes out with a very limited sets. I think he makes them from molds that can only be used a certain number of times. So when these molds run out, they will never be reissued ever again, forever. So I always, myself, I used to always buy three sets because I love making conversions. I like having... Lots of firing poses and stuff, but um, you got to get them when you see them before they run out. He's made some incredible sets in the past, and hopefully he makes some more in the future, and um, we will cover them here. Now, there's another company that's currently producing various sets, sometimes World War II, sometimes... The name is um, Warhansa out of, out of Poland, and they created a set of Russian revolution figures now i don't collect russian revolution but when i saw these it was a, a five figure five or six figure set but i thought man those some of those figures actually look like they'd make great soviet partisans so i bought them and sure enough especially after painting them up you have a guy kneeling sharpshooting an old rifle you have a female figure here with a pistol and her head is covered over by some sort of like a do do rag and you have this guy here, an old guy firing another old rifle. And they look great as partisans. So they will help beef up the ranks of the Engineer Basevich figure set. And finally, this figure is from a very rare Russian set. Now, I cannot find the name of the company that made this set. Some of you out there will know the name of this set. I think there's 12 figures in that set. And uh, one, of the, one of the poses was of a partisan. You know he's a partisan because um, he's wearing the Russian garb, but he's also, he's, he has a captured uh, MP40, a German MP40. 
Um, if anyone knows and, and can identify the name of this set, please uh, please may, leave your answer in the comments. As we all know, uh, the Russians were using the, uh, the railway system in, in the vast country of Russia to bring supplies to the troops. And of course, anything that came by rail was always vulnerable to attacks by partisans. So the Germans came out with the armored railway car. Um, sometimes uh, this particular 135th scale model, which is nicely compatible with 132, is uh, sometimes it's called, called the commando car, and it's got a nice heavy gun on the front of it, and it, and it will roll along the tracks, and it will stop near a, um, near a, uh, a partisan position, and it will fire at the partisans and keep moving along, just so they don't put anything on the tracks. So we have like maybe a, a big 20 or 30 millimeter gun up here, it's a, a 135th scale kit, and oh, and sometimes the turret could be swapped out, and a Panzer IV turret would be put on the top of it, and then they would call it a um, an artillery wagon. <laughs> okay, so let's let's have a little uh, tour around this uh, little armored railway car. Um, in the front here, you have some. Um, first of all, on the bottom are train train wheels so you can ride along the tracks oh uh, here we have some bumpers so when it bumps into a train it uh it'll stay it'll be okay um there's a machine gun there's a few machine gun um placements eyes uh, like um vision slots here um periscope slots uh this would be the door here one door to access the the car oh here are some um armored domes to, for like exhaust this thing is self-propelled too so the back is obviously a mortar i mean uh, has a motor in the back and uh, here's another door in the front here and uh it's really cool so you know i'll give you um show you some figures so if let's say these guys uh it was a hot russian summer day and uh, they wanted to ride on the back of it while it's while it's going through the countryside through the mountains do i look like a cossack look I am a Cossack of White Russia. So the next subject we're going to talk about are the Don Cossacks. Now, before we go into the figures, let me give you a little background about the Cossacks. After the Russian Revolution, uh, the communists took away a lot of the a lot of the status and privilege that the Cossacks held under the Tsar of Russia. When the Germans approached the, the Cossacks to be their allies and overthrow the communists, they were like, yes, we will come in on the side of the Germans. So what the Germans did, they allowed them to keep some of their traditional uniforms, and they also outfitted them with some German uniform elements and, uh, and weaponry. So this particular set was created by uh, Mars Toy Soldiers. Of course, it's a 132 scale set. The first three figures are in slightly different uniforms than the other than the other five figures. So uh, we have a Cossack firing um, a Mauser from waist. Um, you notice he's wearing the sort of the, the traditional, the traditional um, Cossack long coat. You can see like it's this, these little pouches here for spare ammunition on the breast. And they're wearing that, um, the traditional Don Cossack fur wool hats. This figure's use, utilizing a, uh, uh, a captured su Soviet submachine gun, a PPSH, I believe. And this figure is running with his rifle. Now, I imagine um, they would have been on horseback. And then, of course, when they go into combat, they jump off their horses and get into the fighting. Because uh, you can't ride around like the cowboys and Indians. Poses three, four, and five. Um, there's a great example of the Cossacks using some of their traditional garb, like the blue pants with the red stripe down the side, which probably is a, it's a call back to the old um, czar, like when they were serving under the czar. And they're wearing their traditional hats, but they are wearing um, German tunics, and they are definitely wearing, uh, they have German webbing on them and uh, German weapons. Um, here you see a captured Soviet PPSH. 
And uh, this particular gigantic submachine gun, I do not know. I think it might be the, the, Czech, the Czech submachine gun or heavy machine gun. And this guy's loading a Mauser with a slightly different type of Fez style hat. And poses seven and eight. These are goodies. Uh, they seem to be commanders. Now, now the real Mars figure, uh, the guy was just holding a short little knife. And I just, that, that wouldn't do it for me. So what I did is I cut the knife off and I, and I drilled a little hole in his hand. And with a, with a rubbery weapon or something that I found, I uh, carved out a, a sword and then fit it into his hand. And it, and it bends quite nicely. So it won't ever break. So he seems to be lunging with, because they're all armed with those traditional Cossack swords, so it's only right that he has a sword in his hand. And this um, and this other commander, he's wearing the white commander's cap. Uh, he, has a, um, he has a Walter P-38, and from his back, he's, um, he's getting ready to swing his sword forward onto somebody or pull it out of, out of the sheath. And uh, they're two great action poses from two great Cossack warriors. So the first conversion that I made, it is a commander lunging forward, firing his uh, Walter P-38 pistol. And it was created from this figure here, just by cutting the arm off and, um, and adding a straightened pistol arm. Conversions two and three, um, I created this guy from from this kind of a little bit of a dull pose. He's just sort of kneeling down, just loading his rifle or doing whatever. And I and I needed some good, and you will also need some good kneeling firing poses. So I just basically cut the lower halves off of them and placed the upper halves from these two figures. What a family! Look at all that DNA. These two figures came from this and these two here. So here's the full set of Cossacks by Mars in all their glory. And I gotta say, I, um, I really love the way they turned out with all their, their really cool colored uniforms. And, and um, they're a lot of fun. And, and, I, and I do recommend painting Mars figures. In fact, uh, the show is making me learn to love painting figures. I, they're so much more fun to set up and play with when they're painted. And I'm really happy how they turned out. Uh, that pretty much wraps up the episode. So if you like the show, 
please remember to hit the subscription button and then remember to hit the little bell right next to it so you can be notified about any future episodes. If you have any comments or anything, if you have any requests or you've noticed some inaccuracies or anything, put them in the comments. I always return my, I always return the comments and it's really fun interacting with all of you. Anyway, my name is Christian Aldo. I'm the Plastic General and um, long live 132 World War II. Oh, gotta go, gotta go. We'll kill you, you partisan pig.